I think two straight baskets and uh, that's what he has to do. He has to be involved in the ball game. Gant is now shooting 23 of 36, 63.9. Tigers 15 of 38, 39.5. Rebounds 21-16 in favor of Kansas. But early in the first half, it was like a 11 to 2 advantage at one time. Memphis State doing much better on the boards. Turnovers 8 to 4. Kansas leads assists 19 assists to 8 for Memphis State. Kansas inbounds. They get it down to Kellogg. He's open. He puts it up off the back of the rim. Ask you the rebound. Here's a Memphis State break, but Kansas shuts it off at midcourt. Ask you to Moody. Drives and he lays it in. Nice move by Moody. His first two. 53-49. This Brown Hollery defense, defense. Hunter in the lane. Puts it up. He got it over Bedford. Hunter with four points. Hunter, not much of a score, but boy, he really runs the attack. Oh, what a move by Turner. Turner took it down the lane. Hunter back. Kills it off inside. Kellogg missed it. Brody missed the tip in. Now Hunter has it knocked away by Moody. The Turner. And the lane goes. The Tigers are down by two. It is 55-53. Turner, 11 points. Let's see how Kansas reacts. Thompson in and out. Back up, Manning misses. Askew the rebound. The Tigers can tie the game. Moody from the corner. Yes! Moody ties it at 55, and chances says, let's talk it over. 13 23 to go. You can hear it. We are tied at 55. We'll be back in just a minute. He's blocking in his seat, seat along with the Coliseum crowd. The Tigers have caught Kansas now at 55. We mentioned that Andre Turner had to get in the ball game or in the offensive part of the ball game for Memphis State to, to do what they have done. That's exactly what has happened. Andre Turner has become involved and he has scored or he has dished off uh, repeatedly so far for the first uh, six and a half minutes of the first half. If you're Kansas out, you got to wonder they're shooting almost 63 percent, and they are tied at 55 now in the second half. Well, I think Hunter had a misconception of what Turner could actually do because in the first half he was checking him out front. Now Turner's going past him like he's not even there, and uh, that's creating a whole new offense for uh, Memphis State. And this crowd is on its feet. Wilding will throw it in for Kansas. Into Thompson. Kansas has the numbers on the break. Thompson, a wild shot, and it goes in. Thompson, an off-balance shot off the glass, and he got the roll inside. Thompson, 11 points. That ball went up, went out, went back in. Kansas quickly goes back. Up by two, 57-55. Askew, cut off, double team, out to Turner. Turner signaling a play for Memphis State. Hits this Kansas zone. Let's make it a man-to-man -man for Kansas. I thought they were in a zone, but it is a man-to-man. -man. Turner, fadeaway jumper, can't get it. Long tip out. This man is knocked away by Turner from behind with a steal. He just picked Manning's pocket there. Askew ties it again. And now Moody fouls in the backcourt. Vincent Askew with eight points, six here in the second half along with Turner have ignited Memphis State. Turner was the best kept secret. I mean, not Turner, but uh, Kenneth. 
Moody was the best kept secret in the first half. He's a secret weapon. He came in and Kansas had never seen him before. Game tied at 57. Here's Thompson. Misses. Tip and missed by Mitchell, who's in the game. And Memphis made the rebound. The Tigers can take the lead. Turn it up. Yeah, it won't go. Bedford back up his foul. And now some words exchanged between Bradley and Bedford. Bradley gave Bedford a show from behind. He didn't like it. Dryling wisely walked away from the situation and went to midcourt. A very physical basketball game. We expected that before today's game. Now cooler heads prevail. Everyone talks it over. And it's only a momentary thing. In a tie ball game of this magnitude, uh, you have to expect to get pushed, shoved, fouled, uh, I'm not sure how flagrant it was. It, uh, maybe he's going to get a flagrant foul. Officials are talking it over. The foul on Kansas was on Dryling, his third. Well, and I would think it, uh, by the shove or the way that Bedford went, it, maybe it is a flagrant foul. It is a flagrant foul. It is. It's a two-shot situation. Now Dryling talking to the official. Again, the officials will huddle near the free throw line. They called a foul on Dryling. Yes. Uh, now they're trying to determine whether it was flagrant or not, and uh, I guess that's the reason they have three officials. This is talking over. Two to talk about it and one to flip a coin. And now all three huddle at the free throw line. A two shot foul is called. It's made, decision has been made, a two-shot foul. Now both coaches being called to midcourt. It's a two-shot intentional foul is the call. Larry Brown and Dana Kirk now talking to the officials at midcourt. There's two coaches that both been to the final of four. Larry Brown, of course, took UCLA. The year Louisville won it. Of course, the Tigers went last year. Well, now, I, I saw them walk over, and I thought they said a two-shot foul. He signaled two shots a moment ago, and let's see what they will do. Now Memphis State seems to be upset. They don't seem to be upset. They are upset. Al, it's got to be a two-shot situation because <laughs> the bonus is not on. So well, they said, shoot the free throws. It's got to be two. He wasn't shooting. They said he was rebounding. That's fine, but if it's a flagrant foul and he list, he put two fingers up. Now he he wasn't telling me what time it was. Bedford, can he give the Tigers the lead? Yes. At 58-57. 17 for Bedford. This equals the Tigers' biggest lead of the game at one point. Now make it two for the Tigers at 59-57. Straight picking up for the backcourt. Batting to Hunter. Oh, a nice one-hander by Mitchell on the break. Archie Mitchell, the field goal. He has six points off the bench. The front line of Memphis State's zone defense, or full-court pressure defense, has got, as soon as the ball passes them, they have to get back down court. Archie Marshall, the field goal off the break for Kansas. Tied again, this time at 59. Askew, free throw line, bounces off the back of the rim. Tipped by basketball, Holmes and missed. Bedford back up the miss, and now batting the rebound for Kansas. Tigers much more aggressive on the offensive boards here in the second half. Manning fakes, puts it up, and he's fouled on the shot. It counts by basketball, Holmes. Nice pump and head fake used there by Manning. That's a major league move. He did the pump, fake, and shot. Baskerville's foul, number three on him. Danny Manning. Some people think he may have been the high school player of the year two years ago. Up and it is good. 
62 to 59. Of course, his father now one of the assistant coaches at the University of Kansas. Former teammate of Larry Brown in the old ABA. Three point lead for the Jayhawks. 10.44 to go. Bedford over Dryling, an air ball. Kansas blocked out with a rebound. Manning took it away. Hunter looking inside. Trying to go to Dryling. He's covered by Bedford. 62 to 59, Kansas. Thompson with a screen, but he can't shoot. Here's Dryling. He jams it over. He got away from Bedford. And now Piper checks back in for Kansas. Dryling will leave. Bedford is contending. He pushed him off before he went to the basket. Dryling leaves with 15 points. 64-59, Kansas. And we have a timeout. 10.02 to go in the game with our score, Kansas 64. Memphis State 59. We'll be back in just a minute. Jam-packed Mid-South Coliseum. I'd like to mention other Metro Conference games on this date. Find Jacksonville at Florida State, Wyoming at Louisville, Western Kentucky at Virginia Tech, and South Carolina at Davidson Al. South Carolina team, we will see Monday night here. The Gamecocks come into the Mid-South Coliseum to open the Metro Conference for Memphis State. South Carolina, as always, will be a very formidable foe, as all Metro Conference teams are, but they will be a contender. Of course, they were here during the Mid-South Classic. Really did not play well, but we understand in recent weeks they are really coming yep. on and playing much, much better. They're building from the from last year's losses. Leading scores at this point in the ball game: Dryling, 15 for Kansas. Along Manning has 13. Kellogg, 12. Thompson, 11 for the Jayhawks. Tigers. Bedford has 18. Holmes, 12. Turner, 11. And Vincent Askew with eight points. If you're wondering about close games for Kansas, Kansas is 29 and two in the last two seasons in games which they had the lead at halftime. So that is a factor. Kansas, close ball games usually plays very, very well. They have won 13 of 16 games decided by four points or less during the Larry Brown era at the University of Kansas. Shooting percentage is now meant to say 20 of 49, 40.8. Kansas coming down just a bit now. 28 of 49, 57.1. Rebounds 27, 23 in favor of Kansas. Turnovers, Kansas 9, Memphis State 4. 64-59, Kansas in the lead. Jayhawks, an aggressive man-to-man -man defense. He's got Piper on Bedford. He's not near, near, he's not tall enough. Gives away three inches. Turner drives. He's fouled by Hunter. And it goes in. It wasn't pretty, but we'll take it as it bounced in. That's right. That was on Hunter. That was a that was a heart stopper. Ball danced around the rim and fell in for Andre Turner. They call a foul on Manning. I thought it was on Hunter. It is on Hunter. I was right. I thought my eyes had gone bad or something. As always, Matthew, <laughs> you were right. <laughs> the foul was on Hunter. His second. Turner, a three-point chance for Memphis State, and he capitalized 64-62. Kansas up by two. Nine twenty-five left in the game. Kansas way out away from the basket. A lot of motion for the Jayhawks. Got clock in 13 seconds. Well, right now, they don't have the inside threat that they had. Hunter fakes, puts it up, and it bounces off. Bedford another rebound. See, they do not have the big wheel in the center. Tigers can tie the game. Askew 
Fries puts it up. It goes in. Let it go by Eskew. We are tied again. This time at 64. Eskew 10 points. Thompson had the step cut off by Holmes. Now back to Thompson. He's open. Yes, he breaks the tie. And again, I will say, it seems like every time the Tigers can catch Kansas, something happens to the Jayhawks. Thompson, 13 points. Had 17 last year against Memphis State. 8-10 left in the game. What a great game this has turned out to be as two teams in the top 10 are going to go down to the wire. Bedford baseline off the glass. Long rebound of Asperville home. Turner puts it up, and he's fouled on the drive as Wolfong and Dryling back in the game at the 7.54 mark. Piper will leave for Kansas. Askew leaves for Memphis State. Askew has sparked the Tigers here in the second half. Hunter picked up his third foul for Kansas. And the little general Andre Turner to shoot it for Memphis State. Andre, the senior from Mitchell. Most people don't realize Turner, a fine scorer in high school. Free throw bounces in. Actually, he led the city in scoring as a senior over at Mitchell. Very average 24 points a game. Of course, his team won the 1980 uh, city championship over at Mitchell. And he ties the game at 66. 7.48 left in the game. Hunter being pressured by Turner. Out front to Thompson. There's Dryling. He puts it up off the glass. Too hard. Marshall back up. No. Now Manning saves it out. And a new 45 seconds for Kansas. And they will ask for timeout. With 7.24 to go. We're all tied up. Memphis State 66, Kansas 66. And we'll be back to the Coliseum right after this. to a basketball game make for Andre Turner the first half. He was one of six in the field, two of two from the line, only four points. The second half, four of five from the field, also perfect four of four from the line, and 12 points for a total of six to eight, and he has really come on here in the second half to spark the Tigers. He took six shots in the entire first half, and so far, well, just seven minutes, 24 seconds left, he's only taken five, so that means he's going to take at least twice that many. Uh, does make a difference. Another factor we must mention in this game, this is the first time Kansas has played an opponent on their home floor. Their other games away from Lawrence have been in neutral sites, so this could be a factor as we go down to the closing second. Oh, I think very definitely the sixth man is on Memphis State's side uh, today, as we have heard earlier in the ball game, and we haven't even gotten down to the last two minutes. John Wilfong and Kenneth Moody now in the game for Memphis State. 66 all. We are tied. 7.20 to go. At the state in a zone. The 2 3. Wolfong and Turner, the guards. Holmes, Moody, and Bedford on the back line. As a nice soft jump shot by Thompson from outside. Thompson, 15 points. Thompson, a fine player for Kansas. Kansas with some senior leadership. They start some seniors in their lineup. You got people like Thompson, Dryling, you got Kellogg. Wilfong is fouls. He took the jump shot. It is on Thompson. His third, and Vincent Askew will check back in for Memphis State. Along with Dwight Boyd. That is team foul. Number five on Kansas. It'll be a non-shooting situation. Not to say, we'll have the ball out of bounds. They say Wilfong was fouled before the shot, so he did not shoot the free throw. He, he fouled him as he was cutting, cutting through. Boy, back to Turner. Now Askew. 
Empty State down by two, 68-66. Shot clock at 15 seconds. And Turner turns and asks for timeout with 6.18 to go, Al. The situation, Turner there had to ask for timeout. The shot clock down now to 15 seconds. But he wanted to be sure he ran something that was worthwhile. He just didn't want to bomb one up from 30 feet. And I think he, they've got the timeouts, and he wanted to go start. Also, what type of defense does Memphis State play when they go back down the court? Coach Kirk has basically saved the zone. And when you change defenses like that, it makes the opposition change their offense, obviously. And uh, it's a coaching coaching ploy. But Andre wanted to know what he wants, what Coach Kirk wanted him to run and get the ball inside. Again, the 45 second shot clock now using college basketball. Last year, you could run it down to three or four minutes and start spreading it out, but now you just can't do that anymore. No, and you know, I've heard coaches both ways say, you know, well, we wish they would turn the clock off for two minutes and let us coach. You know, well, it's really for the players, but you're supposed to do your coaching in practice, but you can't always do that either. There's pluses and minuses for the 45 second clock running all the way to the end. Uh, nevertheless, that's what's going to happen here today and the rest of the season in college basketball. And I, uh, as I said, Turner wanted to know the play. Moreover, he wanted to know what defense they were supposed to be in on the other end, if they missed the shot or if they make the basket. Okay, Memphis State comes back. Al, only 15 seconds on the shot clock. Well, they have to run a play. They have to, they, unless you get caught and then you're down to two or three seconds, then you, somebody better put it up, as Kansas did in the first half uh, you don't you don't run a play and end up taking a 23 foot jump shot uh, but Kansas did and made it foul trouble also a factor for Kansas they have a lot of players with three Kellogg Dryling Thompson Hunter and Piper Memphis State's basketball homes the only Tiger now with three fouls that could be a big factor as we go down the last 618 here at the Coliseum Memphis State trying to win number 12 and get out to the best start in the school's history for Kansas, they are now 12 and one, and they're trying to make it 13 and one. And this is the best start uh, since the 1971 team went 27 and one to start their year. There's a whole lot of gray matter being burned up in those coaches' boxes today. They, they're doing a whole lot of coaching. Two excellent coaches here today. Excellent. Turner, long range, short. Bedford got the rebound. He saved it. Now thrown away by Boy. As Manning knocks it away. So the Tigers could not score. 68-66 Kansas. Thompson off balance. He got the roll. That's about three times that soft touch of Thompson has been a factor as the ball bounced around and it stayed in. Thompson 17 points equals the game he had a year ago at Lawrence. As Bedford enters on the alley oop. Bedford with a jam. 70 to 68, Kansas. Coach Larry Brown calling the place from the sideline. Shot clock running down to 25 seconds. Hunter penetrates a collision with Turner. Traveling ball on Hunter. So Kansas turns it over. Turnover number 11 for the Kansas Jayhawks. Five turnovers only on Memphis State. The Tigers can tie the game again. Holmes drives, blocked inside by Marshall. Great block in there by Marshall. Junior college transfer. Manning fakes, puts it up. He got it and he's fouled. Foul on Baskerville Holmes. Kansas gets in a tight. They try to go to Manning. Manning is good inside move. Good inside move. Well, he moves very well for a big man. Well, and he doesn't have Bedford on him, and that's the other thing. It, 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 Baskerville's not as tall as, as he is, and uh, Manning is just an excellent, excellent basketball player. Manny Manning played at Lawrence High School senior year. He got it. His 
team finished second in the state of Kansas. Of course, he played his first two years at Page High School in North Carolina. 73-68, Kansas. The Jayhawks back out to five, and now time starting to be a factor with 4.22 to go. Tigers need a basket. Boyd, a big one for Memphis State. Dwight Boyd, six points. That was a big field goal by Dwight Boyd. Nice to hear, hear his name mentioned on the PA. He needs that. 73-70, Kansas. 3.59 left in the game. Hunter lost the ball. It's out of bounds. Kansas turns it over. So Kansas now giving the Tigers a chance to cut into the lead. Memphis State needs to take a good shot here. A big possession. Holmes blocked in there by Manning along with Thompson. It's out of bounds. The Tigers will have it. And a new 45 seconds on the shot clock. Kansas plays very tall on defense. They do a lot of shot blocking. And to Turner, he backs it out. Kansas in a zone, a 2-3. Manning and drawing a big back line for the Jayhawks. Along with Marshall, Marshall 6-6. Elliott, the Bedford doesn't work. Boyd drives, and a block call on Kansas. It is on Manning, his third. Give credit to Dwight Boyd for picking the ball up and taking it to the basket. 16 fouls on Kansas. Four team fouls on Memphis State. That could be a factor, Al, as Kansas will not get to the bonus. With 317 to go, possibly. Boyd up, and it bounces off. Big miss by Boyd. Dwight on the season. Normally a good free throw shooter at 86.7. Dwight averaging 8.1 points a game. He has one of two, and it is 73-71, Kansas. Tigers need to hold the Jayhawks this time down the floor. And the state applying some pressure at midcourt, but Kansas breaks it easily. A big possession for Kansas. Up the lead to four. 2.53 left in the game. Shot clock at 18 seconds. Has Thompson again from outside. Boy, he's a fine shooter. 19 points by Thompson. 75-71. Jayhawk. And that was the score in the game last year out at Lawrence. 75-71. Turner pump fakes, puts it up. Oh, what a shot by Turner. Andre with 18 points. 14 here in the second half. 75-73, Kansas. This crowd urging the Tigers to play defense. Marshall looks it over. Over to Thompson. Shot clock at 20 seconds for the Jayhawks. They're using some time off. Kansas has defeated Louisville. Thompson makes the long jumper as the shot clock ran down. Can the Tigers salvage the Metro Pride here? Askew drives. He it. I think we just registered on the Richter scale. Listen to this crowd at the Coliseum. Kellogg back in for Kansas. Marshall leaves. The foul was on Marshall, his first, and Vincent Askew can go to the line and give the Tigers the lead once again. 
Memphis State's biggest lead in the game has been by only two. Now they say it's a game of streaks, and there's no doubt about it in this one. Askew. That's the free throw. Kansas the rebound. Now the Jayhawks can break the tie. 45 second shot clock out is going to force Kansas to shoot the basketball as opposed to other times. Shot clock running down to 22 seconds. Kansas trying to go inside. Hunter, he throws it away. Hunter had, the shot. Hunter had the shot at the free throw line when he came off the pick. Didn't take it, kicked it back out. Now back the other way, the Tigers will have to shoot the basketball. 105 on the game clock. Can the Tigers break the tie? Shot clock at 30 seconds. Can the Tigers get it inside? Turner drives, baseline, short. Matty the rebound, back the way from the high, back to Tigers can take now the last, last shot. shot. They can take the last shot of the game. The shot clock is off. The game clock at 25 seconds. The Tigers can take the last shot. 15 seconds to go. The game is tied. Askew moves it. The Turner. Andre dribbles. Rock loose. Hits the floor. The foul. Or traveling one. Let's see. The game's going to go to overtime. Turner thought he was fouled with some contact, but the horn went off. And we will go to overtime at the Mid South Coliseum. Oh, what a finish to this one. You couldn't. You couldn't ask for it to, if you, someone wrote it, you couldn't ask for a better finish other than Memphis State making the last shot. Uh, Andre, it was set up for him to have the basketball, obviously, because Askew had the ball out at midcourt. So you knew Turner was going to go deep and cut back, get the basketball, which he did. He got the ball and came towards the free throw line, and they double teamed Andre. Uh, they knew, they know Andre, they saw him play in the last six ball games of the season last year in the tournaments. He took the last shots and he hit about five of them. So they double teamed him and uh, that's, that, that was the end of the game. End of regulation tied at 75 all and will return to the Coliseum for the overtime right after this. Regulation play ends at 75 all. Turner took the last shot and I Looked like he thought he was fouled. A lot of people in the Coliseum maybe thought he was fouled, but referee said no, and the game ends 75 all. Turner in the first half, one of nine from the field. The second half, 11 of 14. Askew, Askew four points in the first half, along with Turner, 26 points. Those two combined in the second half, and uh, you can't stand up between those two to come back and really spark Memphis State. We're in, the, uh, we're in a whole new ball game. Of course, the 45 second clock is back on. Each ball club received one extra timeout for the overtime period. Uh, so we're in a whole new ball game. Set to go, tied 75 all. And Memphis State controls the tip. The lob as Turner goes to Bedford throwing it away. And Bedford thought he was pushed. But you've got to keep playing. Askew knocks it out of bounds. Let me clarify something I said a moment ago. Turner and Askew combined were one of nine in the yeah. first half and 11 of 14 in the second half. They had four points in the first half and 26 in the second half, as I misunderstood what Roger Maness told me here a moment ago. As Bedford claims the rebound. But those two have sparked Memphis State in the second half. And now let's see what happens in the overtime. Bedford over Dryling, back up good. And the state takes the lead at 
This equals the Tigers' biggest lead of the game. Kellogg, long range. Can't tie it. Out of bounds. And it goes to Memphis State. Rowling is not taking the shots. Those were shots he was taking in the first half, and he's now passing the ball off. We got to question that shot there by Kellogg. That was not a high percentage shot. No. Right around Dry Kellogg. Dryling had the ball inside, and he hasn't shot his hook shot. He hasn't been in position, but he's gotten the ball inside, and of course, Betts is playing a little tougher, too. And the Tigers add to the lead. Turner puts it up. Yes! And it's 79, 75 Tigers, and now the heat goes to Kansas. Defense! 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 Thompson from long range, a big field goal. Thompson, 21 points. He has hit a lot of field goals from long range. Tigers by two, 79-77. 2.58 left in the first overtime. Holmes blocked and taken by Kansas. And they throw it away. So no damage done by the Jayhawks. That is 15 turnovers now by Kansas. Six for Memphis State. Timeout asked for by Memphis State. 2.39 to go in the first overtime with our score. Memphis State 79, Kansas 77. Of course, Coach Kirk now is saying this is what we want to do. We will either we want to run the play, we want to use the clock to our advantage, and this is what we want to do on defense. Kidith Moody is going back in the ball game. Of course, he had a real real hot streak in the short time that he that he played. Uh, Kansas, of course, has to. I'm sure is talking about offense rather than defense. Dryling is not taking the shot that he had early in the ball game, and that's a higher percentage shot than they're taking even Thompson with 21 points. He's shooting the ball from 20 feet. Now, my feelings, that's been the factor. Dryling has been pushed out away from yes. the basket. is not getting the shots that you just mentioned inside. That's right, and, and I'm sure that's what Coach Brown is, is trying to tell him. And, uh, They've got pushed. They, they shot 62, and that's a pretty, pretty high percentage. Memphis State's percentage has come up. Defensively, Memphis State wants to stay away from fouls. They want to stay away from fouls. Would, would, would imagine they would be in the zone. But, of course, they need to score. They have possession. They need to score right now. So whatever Kansas comes out in, Coach Kirk has given them a man-to-man -man play and a zone play and telling them to execute, get the good shot, kick it back out if you don't have it, use the 45 second clock but if you have it go ahead and score because you've got to turn the ball loose uh, until there's less than 45 seconds at the state in kansas kansas 12 and 1 at the state of course 11 and 0 and this series two to one in favor of the jayhawks tigers trying to even up this series at two apiece between these two basketball powers Kansas has defeated some good ball clubs this season. They defeated Kentucky, they defeated Washington, Louisville, North Carolina State, Wichita State, Arkansas. You can see what a quality opponent this is for the Memphis State Tigers. And the Tigers have the lead, 79-77. Moody is in for Baskerville. Kenneth Moody has checked into the game. Of course, Moody's been through the wars. He has the junior college experience, so he's... He's been to the well a lot of times. Thank you. Looking for a little quickness. Kansas is in the man-to-man, -man and they're looking for quickness with Moody, and he is a, maybe a little bit better outside shooter. We've got a whistle on the drive as Ashby is fouled by Kellogg. His fourth. And the one-and-one one for Memphis State. Yes. And a factor, only four team fouls on the Tigers. So you can actually go down on the other end, and as long as they're not shooting, Stop them from a break or a, a thing, shooting foul. Big one and one for Askew. Vincent puts it up, bounces around, comes off. Now Kansas can tie the game. And motions up and down on this basketball game. It's a 2 3 zone or 2 1 2. Kellogg, he's open. 
This is a long jumper. Turner fighting for the rebound. Kellogg picks it up, gets it to Hunter, but a turnover on Kansas. As Kellogg was out of bounds. And again, Al, a long shot by Kellogg from way outside. Of course, he's a good shooter. He had 30, 34 something last year, and he and Thompson are bombs away. Well, he's 0 4 in the second half. Tigers a two point lead, 158 to go in the overtime. And Gilbert move off the glass. The Tigers by four, 81 77. Hunter is open. No! Trailing tips it in. And timeout as four by Kansas at the 140 mark, 81 79. Would imagine that Coach Brown, he wanted the timeout, and imagine he'll put on a full court press or some type of pressure defense. But Al, again, we see Hunter, the guy really, you don't want to take the shot for Kansas, had to take the jump shot for the Jayhawks. Well, they're giving, Memphis State is giving him the jump shot, and he, as you mentioned, he's just not taking it. Uh, he, he didn't hit it then. Uh, Dryling, of course, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a moose in the middle, and uh, he got the ball and put it back in. But they're giving Memphis State, I mean, they're giving uh, him that shot at the top of the circle. He's only shooting 45% on the year, so you can see uh, not a high percentage shot for Kansas when he takes that shot from outside. That's right, and they're taking a perimeter shot, and Memphis State, of course, playing the zone. Get the ball in the Dryling, and uh, that's the effective way. Uh, of course, they're only two points down and, uh, and with a minute and 40 left, so you can't say they've been ineffective. But uh, passing the ball on the perimeter or perimeter shooting usually don't win basketball games. You have to get the, against the zone. You have to get the ball inside, and they have a 7-foot, 240-pounder inside. Memphis State, and what a difference. The first half, 31.2 in shooting. Yeah. The second half, Roger Maness tells us 20 of 30, a hot 66.7 the Memphis State Tigers and Kansas has cooled down just a bit from their high percentage that's the in the first half. That's the reason they keep averages and, and Memphis State and Kansas both are going to shoot their average. Uh, or if one of them shoots very high or very low then that means the game is, is over. But uh, normally the two teams will shoot their average. Both ball clubs shoot over 50 percent. Oh yes. As a team yes. on the year the Tigers at 53, Kansas at 56.4. It's the individuals that raise and lower that because the, you have to do the total. Moody goes out, Baskerville Holmes back in for. We, we, and we see a full court pressure defense with a center fielder driling back here in the back. 7 1 player playing center field for Kansas. The Tigers up by two at 81 to 79. Memphis State's trying to isolate and play one on one. If you watch the position of them, they get out, play one on one, and that's how Askew scored last time. Now Turner's out front with the ball. Shot clock at 20 seconds. Turner way out away from the basket. He's guarded by Hunter. Shot clock at nine seconds. Boy, to Bedford, to Turner. Five seconds. Turner from long range off the back of the rim. Kansas forced the bad shot there by Memphis State. But Memphis State will get the ball back. Shot clock at 36 seconds. The game clock at 46 seconds. As Dryling is fouled as he goes to the basket. But he Mike was Turner. not shooting. He was not shooting. Exactly right. Memphis State, that's only their fifth team foul. They can force Kansas not to take some good shots. That's right. Or really get them off if they foul before the shot. They've got one more foul they can play with. 81-79 at the state. Kellogg to Thompson. 40 seconds to go. Shot clock is off. No longer a factor. Thompson misses some long range. Kellogg the rebound. He lost the basketball. Picked up by Baskerville Holmes, and he is fouled by Manning. And the Tigers are in the one and one. Manning, his fourth.
Baskerville Holmes and Turner talk in the backcourt. Now the Tigers huddle. 28 seconds to go. 81-79, Memphis State. Baskerville Holmes, the Batman, with the one and one. Crowd of the Coliseum on the edge of their seats. Holmes, it is up. It is good. It had some metal, but stayed in. And now the odd digit situation. It will take more than one possession for Kansas. Baskerville got it through. Kansas must hurry. It's 83 79. And they will ask for timeout. 25 seconds left. The Tigers lead it 83 to 79. In Memphis State, of course, Baskerville home showed his senior leadership, shooting the free throws and making them. Now, I don't know what Coach Brown, of course, when they got the ball to half court, he called a timeout. Obviously, he has a play he's going to run and going to run it quick. Then he's going to full court press and try to get the ball back because Memphis State will get the ball back. And Kansas now only one timeout left. In this only game. one timeout left, but he's going to use it if, if they get the ball in right now, make the basket, he'll call a timeout as quick as he can and then try to put the full court pressure on and Memphis State, of course, will try to get the ball back in bounds. But now the Tigers have not committed 16 fouls. They can foul Kansas before they get off That's a good exactly shot. That's exactly right. If the ball on the inbounds, if, if the man is either, either close or looks like he's one-on-one -on -one with his man, he can be fouled with no, in, in, with no liability. They, all Kansas does is use the clock and take the ball out of bounds again. But Coach Brown, wants, I'm sure he has a sideline play that he wants to use right now. And one or two passes, and the ball goes up. Then a timeout, and then try to get the ball back. And that's all. That's the only thing he can possibly do. You think in terms of who may shoot it, Kellogg or Thompson, the guys Kellogg, who usually gun from outside. Kellogg or Thompson, or a big dryling in the middle if they get the ball in. But they haven't. He hasn't done in the second half what he did in the first half. Uh, Bedford had a lot to do with that. But he has had the ball inside and not taken the shot. 83 to 79. 25 seconds left in the first overtime. Manning has not been the, uh, I guess you would say, the, the person that we thought today. Uh, he hasn't scored and he hasn't he hasn't been the dominant factor that we thought he probably would be. You see that? Manning into Thompson. He puts up a pass into Dryling. He missed the shot in close. Rebound blocked in there by Bedford. And a whistle. It is a foul on Turner. But remember, Kansas is not in the one and one. See, they went to Thompson. He didn't have the shot, so he got the ball in the dryling. Dryling missed the little turnaround jumper. And Kellogg put it back up. It was blocked in there by Bedford. 83-79, Memphis State. Kellogg puts it up. Looks like he traveled. No call. Ball tipped around by Kansas, driving back up, and he's fouled with nine seconds to go. Matt, if he had made that basket, it would have been a three-point or a possible three-point play. We will have a timeout on the Coliseum with nine seconds to go. It is 83 to 79, and now that's the last timeout now by Memphis State. Now, what do you do if you're Kansas? Do you? It's a it's a shooting foul. Do you make the first and miss the second? Uh, because it's your three points. Well, you're actually your four points down. You have to keep the ball in play. So do you make the two? You have to make the two free throws and call a timeout with nine seconds left. Uh, or do you make the first one, miss the second one, trying to keep the ball in play and hope for another three-point play? And they've got to score quickly because That's the right. Tigers, if they take more than four or five seconds, they can just take the ball out of bounds and stand That's there and there's nothing they can do about it. Exactly right. If anything past five seconds, and it's, uh, it's basically over no matter what Kansas does. Uh, I, I'm sure Coach Brown says, let's get the ball in, get it up fast. Uh, if they miss the free throws. Of course, everything's happening now without the clock running. That's a factor, too, as 
Kansas will go to the line to shoot the free throws. He's got to make these two, and then there's nine seconds left in the game. They've got to get the ball almost on the first pass. 83 to 79. If he misses and Kansas rebounds and scores, the Tigers should just yes. take the ball out of bounds, and that's going to be that's a factor right. with nine seconds to go. So he has to hit the free throws. So missing a free throw really isn't in it. You have to make the two free throws line up. There's a timeout left. Call a timeout. Line up in your defense and then get the ball on the inbound pass. Kansas will shoot at the line. It's trialing up there. He's the senior, a fifth-year senior. Last year averaged 13.1 points a game for Kansas. That was fourth in scoring. For Kansas to win, it almost has to be simultaneous of what the, the sequence of things that we have just suggested. Riley. Facing the end zone, puts it up, and he missed it. That may nail the lid there for Kansas. And there's no way you can you can coach and you can instruct. Uh, and Larry Brown is the, it's not in his hands anymore. This one up and it is good. Marshall will check in now for Kansas. Somebody's got to leave the floor for the Jayhawks. Well, they want a quicker person in there for Dryling. Dryling leaves. Nine seconds to go. 83-80. Memphis State knocked out of bounds by Hunter. No time off the clock. They do not press the inbounds man. The man passing the ball inbounds. They do not pressure him. All the Tigers have to do is get it inbounds. Knocked out of bounds by Kansas. It should go to Memphis State, yes. Holmes was clobbered on the sideline as the ball was knocked out of bounds. Eight like, seconds left. Looked like a cookie. And now intercepted by Hunter. Hunter turns, it's blocked, and a foul on Turner. And that is what you did not want to happen if you're a Memphis State fan. Kansas goes to the line now, and the clock is stopped. Tigers had trouble getting the ball in bounds, and on the third try, they turned it over. All Memphis State had to do was get it in bounds. Dryling now comes back in. Marshall will leave. Kansas forced the turnover. And now he hits both free throws and Kansas takes a quick foul. The Tigers are going to have to hit their free throw. Hunter under pressure puts it up. It's short. He gets the rebound, puts it up off the glass. Manning shot is blocked inside. Thompson's got it one second. It's over. It's over. The Tigers have defeated Kansas in overtime by a score of 83 to 80. Memphis State has defeated Kansas 83 to 80, and we'll be back with the final stats right after this. Hey, what? Well, the Memphis State Tigers run their record now to 12 and 0 in this season as Kansas falls to 12 and 2 in the Battle of Memphis as the Tigers come out a winner 83 to 80 in overtime. The game tied at 75 all at the end of regulation. Let's take a look at scoring first for the losing Kansas Jayhawks under coach Larry Brown from the Big 8 Conference. They were led in scoring by Calvin Thompson who had a fine game from outside with 21 points. They had 16 points for Danny Manning, 18 points for Greg Dryling. 12 points for Ron Kellogg. He had 34 last year, only 12 this time out. I didn't, really didn't think he was a big factor in this game. Six points for Archie Marshall off the bench, four for Cedric Hunter, two for Chris Piper, and one for Mark Turgeon. 80 points for the losing Kansas Jayhawks. For the winning Memphis State Tigers, as I mentioned, now 12-0 and, and the best start ever to start the season for a Memphis State Tiger team. The Tigers led by Andre Turner, and what a second half Andre Turner have. Andre, in the first half, only had four points. 16 points came in the second half for Andre. He led the Tigers, uh, take it, he's second in scoring with 20. Let's make Bedford leading in scoring with 22 for the Memphis State Tigers. Turner with 20. So Bedford had 22, Turner with 20 for Memphis State. We had 14 points apiece for Baskerville Holmes and Vincent Askew. Then we'll get down to seven points for Dwight Boyd, who hit a big field goal in the second half 
for Memphis State to get the Tigers into the lead. We had four points for Kenneth Moody off the bench, who I thought played a real good game coming in at a sub row for Memphis State. Two points for John Wilfong. Marvin Alexander and Dwayne Bailey played briefly but did not score for the Tigers again. I'll mention Bedford, the leading scorer, not Turner. Bedford, 22. Turner, 20 for Memphis State. Al, it finished 75 all in regulation in the overtime. Memphis State wins it by a score now of 83 to 80. You know, with nine seconds left, to Kansas still had opportunities. They had one and one free throw two different times. They had shots at the basket. Ball would just not drop. Memphis State, of course, played good defense. Uh, then you mentioned Kenneth Moody. He came in right after the second half started, did not play in the first half. He hit four straight points when Memphis State needed four points. Awfully bad. Out. Getting him out. A plus for Coach Dana Kirk's team is the young men come in and play their role, and they, they, they do what they have to do. Andre Turner, of course, you, it was like lights on and lights off. The first half, he was playing the ball game, doing everything he needed to do, except force the ball inside and force to get his shots off. He did in the second half, and, and he and Askew, as you said, were the catalyst, and they were the difference in the ball game. Andre Turner with 20, Bedford with 22, do the damage for Memphis State as the Tigers now 12-0 and defeat Kansas in overtime by a score of 83-80. to 80. Join us Monday night here on Channel 10 as the Tigers